Admittedly, I have a problem when it comes to bandwagons. If something suddenly takes off in popularity, I don't want to be guilty of coming on after everyone else started raving about it. Partly, this is me trying to be a reverse hipster. But also, when I see some of the people who really get revved up on these things, I don't think very highly of their tastes in music, movies, books, or television, so I think that surely this thing that they are now part of cannot be any good, can it? Enter the Hunger Games, and more importantly, my sister. She is very good at finding these things before they hit big. She discovered Twilight before I ever heard another soul declare themselves to be part of Team Edward or Team Jacob, and she discovered the Hunger Games roughly two years before I had heard another person talk about the book, and three years before the movie came out in theaters. Recently, she had checked out the first book from our local library, and owns the second and third books in this trilogy. And when she finished reading the first book, she asked me if I wanted to read the book. I have something of an interest in dystopian futures, as my all-time favorite X-Men storyline is Days of Future Past, and I have a special place in my heart for films like Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome and Escape from New York. So this is seemingly right up my alley. And I must shamefully admit that my mild curiosity about the book was not what drove me to read the book, at least not entirely. I wanted to push my sister to read something in return. She does not read comics, but I have tried once in the past to get her to read a specific comic book based on her interest in a non-comic book property that was similar in tone and execution. So this time, I wanted her to read Batgirl Year One. She has not yet read it or even touched it, as she wants to finish reading the rest of the Hunger Games trilogy before embarking on this quest. So, the Hunger Games. What did I think? Did it measure up to the hype I've been hearing for a few years? Well, I think it was a very well executed book, but I truthfully don't know what everyone else saw in it. I am not discrediting the book, but many of the people I know who read it, I don't consider them to be fans of science fiction and the dystopian stories I admitted that I love. I still do not know what they liked about the Hunger Games, but I am beginning to think I know what I liked about it. From the start, this book does not talk down to its audience. I was shocked to see that this book, if I had to judge what grade level it is aimed at, is probably written for people in the 6th grade, or if the school system you are accustomed to is different than what I'm speaking of, I would say that this book is aimed at people who are 10 or 11 years old. The size of the font and how far apart the lines are spaced on a page surprised me. I had friends in their 20s and older who were reading these books, talking them up, and I just kind of assumed that they were aimed at that age group. What is further shocking about this revelation is the subject matter of the book. We are talking about a world where yearly, 23 children die in gladiatorial combat and it is televised for the entire country to see. This is pretty heavy stuff. Very violent, not pulling any punches. And I like that. While I don't think that we should inject more gratuitous violence or sexual themes into entertainment aimed at youths, I don't think that children should be coddled either. This isn't telling kids that the world is A-OK -okay and death is just a myth or something. Death and murder very much permeate this story, and it isn't far-fetched at all to say that those things are very crucial, actually. Despite this, the author, Suzanne Collins, she manages to not make either the protagonist or her beau into th bloodthirsty killers. They both kill, yes, but it really does come across like they are in a position where they cannot do anything else, and their lives are on the line, so they must do what they do. Speaking of the protagonist, Katniss Everdeen, let me speak about her for a few minutes. When the book starts, I actually didn't much care for Katniss. She came across as extremely hard and cynical, to the point where it was off-putting for me. This was almost certainly by design, as by the time she volunteers to take her younger, fragile sister Primrose's place in the Hunger Games, where 24 men enter and one man leaves, I have come to see that this is a hard, jaded exterior that Katniss only projects, and it is just a facade and that she really does have a heart, but she has been fooled into caring about people some time before, and it has not worked out so well in the past. Even though I didn't like her very much at the beginning, I came around to her very quickly, and only became more invested in her as the story progressed. The book is told in first person, which led to maybe my only complaint about the book. Katniss, for all that I like her, is astoundingly oblivious to some things that seem pretty obvious to me. If you haven't read the book, I'm going to spoil this thing, so put your earmuffs on. 
Before Katniss and the other teen from her district, Peeta, are thrown into the arena slash dome, Peeta announces on television that he is in love with Katniss. This, of course, puts a wrench in everything, since, as of this moment in the book, we believe that there can be only one. Now, it never actually occurred to me that this was not sincere, but Katniss immediately suspects that this is somehow a ploy from Peeta to make her look like a fool and give himself a better chance of survival in the dome. And yet, as the massacre continues, Katniss remains completely ignorant that Peter really does love her, and it becomes increasingly obvious to me that Peter loves her. The problem is that we are seeing and hearing everything about this world through Katniss. If I am able to suss out that Peter loves Katniss, then it should be obvious to her as well, especially considering that she is smart enough to outlive and outsmart 22 other children by the end of the book. This is really the problem with first-person perspective in general. If we are able to notice something, it should only be something that the narrator has already noticed and has told us in narration. We cannot be smarter than the narrator, and in the case of The Hunger Games, I felt like I was at times. Nor should we be able to notice something if the narrator hasn't noticed it, since we are seeing everything in this world through her eyes. And again, I felt like we were being able to notice things that she wasn't able to notice, and that's a problem in a first-person narrative story. Overall, I enjoyed this book. There were many moments that I did not see coming, though there were, truthfully, just as many that were quite predictable to me. I was, overall, quite pleased with the book in how it doesn't try to dumb down the content or belittle the intelligence of the audience. I will definitely be reading the sequels to this book, which I would not be doing if I did not like this book, though I will wait some time before I begin the next book.